it is me i'm in footlights gear but it's me i am here today to review a book in my a new house you've seen it before blah 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 and it's actually a new video it's not something from the summer uh. today i'm actually reviewing a play i haven't reviewed a play in a while i mean I say that I have just reviewed First Child, but I'm doing a Renaissance play, so something from quite a long time ago. But it's worth it, it is a really cool play to read. Even if it is kids. All my free time, killing me softly with his song, making my whole life Renaissance, killing me softly with his song. Although my introduction may make it seem otherwise, I actually did really enjoy reading The Spanish Tragedy by Thomas Kitt. The Spanish Tragedy is a play that is centred on the life of the characters that Don Andrea knew after his death. It's sort of him with revenge watching what happens to try and get his revenge and hope that the people he'd expect to avenge him do. It's definitely got this element of meta theatre and the sort of play within a play that is really typical of Renaissance drama. There are lots of characters in this play and there's lots of murder and deceit and craziness and madness and all of that builds up and builds up and builds up until quite an explosive ending. I personally actually really enjoyed the play because you, like Don Andrea, constantly want him to get revenge despite the fact that his revenge means death and it sort of makes you question as a person where your morality lies without saying oh this is the right thing to do and this is the wrong thing because in in a normal sense like an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind but at the same time you want the characters that did hurt Don Andrea to die and for Geronimo to get revenge for his son because of just some like human instinct to yeah you deserve to get comeuppance for what happened. Lots of key themes in the play that were massive anxieties in the 1590s and around that time generally. Things like money, ec economy in um, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I can never say that right. <laughs> I think that's right. But in that letter he said or Paul said to the Ephesians but to anyone that would have read it in the Renaissance time that people who do not fulfill God and listen to what he says will not be financial um, and will not get that sort of inheritance from God that you'd expect. So that was a huge anxiety at the time that does come across, especially when Hieronimo appears to go crazy to the other characters. Their instant assumption is that he is doing so because he wants the money that's a ransom for his son's death or that was for his son when he beat Balthazar. The play definitely seems to stem from its culture, from its context of things like economy, but all sorts of representations of women and other anxieties, societal assumptions from the time come through. And it definitely helps to look at those things when reading the play because you understand it more. And also you sort of understand then why the Spanish tragedy was such a huge stepping stone for the future Plays that the play was it. definitely a hit. It was being performed years and years after its original production. It was released with a printed text. It was always in circulation. And that's a massive thing for theatre in, in the Elizabethan era. It just didn't happen in that way. And it really set a trend for published plays and continued performances and readaptations that happen all the time. And there really were. There were loads of adaptations, additions to the play as well that you don't expect and when you read them you think but surely that isn't necessary because there's an essence of that in the play but obviously people were discussing it and trying to make this play more than it is. Shakespeare who all of you guys know that I quite like definitely was inspired I mean Hamlet has a play within a play surely that's got to have derived from somewhere and there'll be other writers at the time who did it and it just proves that Shakespeare wasn't just an apprentice writer in his early stages. He looked at stuff way before him, but he looked at his contemporaries. And yes, Kidd was probably his predecessor in a sense, but his work shaped 
what future playwrights wrote. And this play within a play thing isn't the only thing that other writers stole because it was so effective in Kid. For a person just like, well I say just like me but I am studying English, but someone who isn't studying literature, this is a really interesting play to read just for a sense of what it is to be a tragedy, specifically in the Renaissance era, but it really is a, a, a landmark high point of tragic writing and there's a lot to enjoy within the play. Yes, there are other tragedies that are really great and I'll always recommend reading some Shakespeare, but to read something that's not Mr. Wills, then I think this is a really good alternative. Kids does a lot of things that aren't necessarily conventional so there's a massive scene where one of the characters does kill themselves and that would never be shown on stage in Greek drama but it is in this play and I think that's a particularly effective moment and there are lots of moments in the play that make you question what is shown to an audience and how you would respond if you were in an audience now looking at those things and whether you think that would be how people before would respond to that. The play is also good to read simply because it's got a cool plot. Yes, there are confusing moments and you sort of forget who's who, but at the end of the day, it's the breakdown between peace and conflict and whether you can have peace with two sides that are conflicting and whether that's only an image created by the highest powers or if peace is always underrun by friction. It sort of makes you question what you'd do if you were in a position of power or if not. If you could see the person that had killed your brother, would you do anything about it just because society has said you need to be at peace with the place that they're from? Really interesting and as much as I want to flap about it, I know that you guys will find it really boring because it is Renaissance drama and the book reviews I do of contemporary fiction are more popular. But it is good and I think it's worth reading. It's been the best play I've read so far, um, at least in theatrical cultures. Not much can beat Revenge's Tragedy, unfortunately. It is extremely similar. The fact this is the Spanish tragedy, there's lots of geographical stuff, which is also really interesting and does make it a bit more real. But it's worth it and if you have time between whatever you're doing, whether it's working or studying or you know, binge watching my videos, then go for it because I think it's fun and it will give you more of a mindset of literature. It's amazing to read Potter and Lord of the Rings and Chick Lit or whatever it is, but sometimes it's a bit nice to read something completely against the grain of what you normally read. And although for me this is quite typical, actually, I think if I wasn't someone who would normally read this, I'd find this really useful. Just eye opening. Always, I'd like more book suggestions, play suggestions, poetry anthology suggestions. I've got to write a load of poetry at the moment, so any suggestions are great, even if it's just one poem, a play, anything. I want to read what you want to hear me talk about, so please do get in touch. I do also want a new writer to join me in the land of this, so if you're keen, message me, email. You see all the details, they're all in the syllabub below. <laughs> Brilliant, well, have a lovely, wonderful day.